Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Real Talk, Real Leaders. I'm your host, Shauna Griffiths. And today I'm super excited to have one of my very good friends and one of the favorite people um, that I ride bikes with, um, Nick Knezevich. Uh, Nick, thank you so much. I know that you didn't really want to come on here, but thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> Hi, Shauna. Good morning. Yeah, I'm excited to be here now that we got started. <laughs> so, so everybody, Nick is not one, like many people who I have on here, and this is partly why I love to have these type of people on, they don't actually like the spotlight. Um, and that's actually something that I love about and find uh, pretty common with some leaders um, is not wanting to be in the front of the camera and not always wanting to be the one speaking. So thanks for the extra courage. I swear, I think that I kind of bribed him um, thinking back to the time I kind of saved his life on a ride, giving him some um, margarita blocks. So I'm, I'm, I'm pulling from that to have him <laughs> come on today. <laughs> I'm paying my debt. Yes. Thanks for saving me, <laughs> saving me from dying in the desert. That was, that was great. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so folks, uh, we actually don't talk much about work when we're out riding bikes, which is actually kind of a beautiful thing. But one day I figured out or found out that Nick um, works in the renewable energy space. And I have this obs literally obsession with wind turbines and solar energy. Um, and so that's the spaces, those are the spaces that Nick um, lives in with his work. So he is a project manager, supervisor, um, renewables at Alteg. Um, and so, as I said to you earlier, as for those of us mere mortals who don't spend time in this space, it's not a space that I think is um, that much, is, at least for, I think my audience, our audience is not a space that they really might live in very much. So. Can you, before we get started, can you give us um, kind of a digestible understanding of the space in which you operate and what you all are doing? Uh, sure. So um, that was all correct. Um, okay. the, the renewable energy space today that I work in is primarily focused in solar photovoltaic energy and wind generation. As you mentioned, when you travel across the country these days, you, you can't miss the increase in wind turbines um, spread out around the country, which I love to see. Um, I've been lucky enough to work on some really big projects in the Midwest that you you see as you're traveling through uh, smaller towns, and you know, obviously, incredibly proud of those. Um, there are the renewable energy space is much bigger than just solar or wind, but <laughs> that's where my focus is. I mean, there is um, there's geothermal uh, energy, there is um, hydro. You know, generation. Think of a dam. You know, obviously, uh, not limited to solar or wind, but that's really where I've been working in the, for the last eleven years or so. Got it. I mean, it must be so interesting to be. It's such a. I would think of it as like the wild, wild west, right? Um, it's such a pioneering space, and I think what you're doing is so probably so pioneering. So. I think it's interesting, like talk to us about what's your evolution of your career that's taken you to the seat you're at today, which is actually, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but that you're actually also in a new seat of leadership. Um, so we can get into that, but like talk us through a little bit of your career evolution, again, in such a pioneering space. Sure. Um, I love this story. This is, uh, this is how I got into renewable, renewables. Okay. I was working, I was living in Chicago, where I'm from, and I was working as project manager, uh, basically a project manager and a business development slash sales guy in manufacturing, in, in, in industry. What we did is, um, the reason I got into that, what we did is we went into domestic manufacturers who have been struggling for decades in this country um, to remain competitive in the global marketplace, and we would find solutions using technology that would help them stay competitive and uh, in by manufacturing in the United States and be able to continue to do so rather than you know close down warehouses and factories and move them overseas or you know to different countries where the cost of labor is less and there are less environmental restrictions just the general cost of doing business is restrictive here in the United States because of some of those things. And those are all incredibly necessary things, but it is what it is. I was very passionate about that. I mean, I loved doing that because most of the people in my family have worked in manufacturing. You know, they cut steel, 
they they're machinists and mold makers and engineers and things like that. So I saw the exit of manufacturing as a you know something I wanted to do, something I really wanted to try to help. So fast forward to a ski trip that I took out to Colorado, and I met uh, a friend of ours, a good lifelong friend who lives out here, and I told him that you know I was really interested in renewable energy. I didn't know anything really about it at the time, but he had a contact out here that was working in the space. So while I was out here skiing. Um, he made an introduction and we talked a little bit and I explained to him, you know, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to become either an engineer or a scientist. And I, but I'd like to figure out how I could contribute. I want to, I want to be involved, um, in renewable energy because that was my next, you know, it's, it's what your passion is. I, I felt very, very, um, motivated by trying to do something to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and pollution. Yeah. Like a lot of us, you know, Shauna and I, for those listening, we play outside every chance we get. And <laughs> maybe folks don't realize just, you know, the impact of pollution and greenhouse gases are having uh, and climate change is having on the world we live in and play in. So after speaking with this, this uh, contact that I made, he ended up offering me a job to move, move out here, work for him. I started managing small, um, small renewable energy projects, small solar projects for him. Um, and then that developed into taking larger projects, going to work for a large, one of the biggest global um, uh, solar uh, companies that would develop and build and own and operate uh, power plants. And then it have continued to evolve to work for uh, Alteg, where I am now um, as a project manager. And, uh, that then in turn evolved to leading a small team of incredibly skilled people to uh, continue what we're doing. That's awesome. That's no, the it's, inter it's interesting, like the part that I was thinking about preparing for this um, session, and it is exactly what you said, like, and that's why part of the reason why I wanted you on is because like what you're doing every day, you are literally working on something that is aimed at having massive impact on this world. And like, and that's pretty awesome. And I think that, you know, you can, I'm a marketer, so someone can market to, you know, sell a tube of toothpaste or something like that. But I think it's pretty awesome when the work that you're doing is literally working to change the footprint of how we're moving forward, um, you know, in this world. So, um, so anyway, so thank you for mentioning that. But so, so you talked about the leadership role that you have now, which is new. And you and I have talked recently, like, Leadership is it. We're lucky to be in the situation to be in, you know, a leadership role, and and you know, you've definitely earned the seat that you're in, and congratulations. Um, and it doesn't come without challenge. And you know, we've been we've had some really open discussions about that. And I think I just love to hear like a little bit about whether it's your style or um, you know, how, what are some of these chain those challenges that you're facing. Um, you know, and as a, as a leader, as a new leader, especially given, you know, all you're touching. Those are great questions. Um, I thought about this a lot in preparing for this. And as far as if there is a style, it would be, I try to sort of emulate what I received from the influential bosses I've had in my life. Um, yeah. I, th I think I like to try to be fair. I mean, what I most appreciated um, in my professional career is autonomy and being able to work as I see, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trusted in this, in a role, figure it out, work autonomously with this is minimal, you know, no one, I don't think anyone really can say they love a micromanager, right. <laughs> but there's, there is a, you know, there is a balance between micromanaging and, um, and not having enough input or not listening enough to what's needed, you know? So, um, I like to, again, I'm in motivated by, motivated and inspired by um, the, the previous managers and supervisors and bosses I've had in my life that allowed me to do that. You know, give yourself a little runway and figure things out. It's not always uh, pretty, but as long as we're successful, you, you know, and you've learned something, it's, it's great. Um, you asked about challenges and that's interest. That's very interesting because I've, I've recently just sort of had a, an epiphany, you know, we do a lot of, um, I spend a lot of time trying to um, remove obstacles for people on my team. I figure we've got incredibly, I have a team of 
I have so much respect for these people on this team. They're all incredible. They're subject matter experts. They're hard workers. They're very capable and intelligent. They're, they're great. I love them. They're, they're great. So I thought that, you know, the best thing I can do for them is to make sure they have everything they need and remove obstacles for them so they can just work. And um, the challenge in that is I realized that I, you know, I, a challenge to me is really identifying what the strengths are in people and what opportunities are in people and remembering that you can't, I can't be all things to all of these people. I have to find a balance. And, um, you know, some folks on my team are completely autonomous like me. They want to be, they want to run with a project. I check in, they come to me if they need something from the company or some support and they get it. Um, others um, really thrive with more input and want it. So I think the challenge right now is um, for me to really like read between the lines and see, you know, identify opportunities to give that input and support without folks having to ask for it. So mm -hmm. it's something I'm learning. Yeah, amazing. It is so true. I, I believe very much the same. It's like in our role as leaders, a lot of my time is spent identifying where there are hurdles that, pe that could be in front of someone and trying to help remove them so that the people can just do their jobs. Like, let me get rid of, I can deal with all this other noise and chaos so that you can just stay focused on what you need to do. And I love what you just said about really understanding what makes each person uniquely tick because the thing that you value and what you just said about like autonomy may or may not be or like a degree to which your staff may you know may change depending on who that person is so I, I just I love what the way you talked about that is really starting to understand what each person needs and how you can give that to them um, and it's interesting because you're doing all those things to help block and tackle, but then at the same time, there's certain things that you know you need to push forward on your own. So it is really this like interesting dance of, you know, hitting those priorities, but making sure those people can be successful. Right. Yeah, you know, I've watched some of your previous podcasts and a lot of your guests are, um, you know, incredibly talented and ex more experienced in this role. So I, maybe it's just a great reminder to think back of when they were new in the role and the things that, um, you know, they, they, people may take for granted now are not, um, are not necessarily intuitive to somebody, you know, in, in new in a leadership position. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we're doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really interesting. I think like, you know, it is this constant, and again, this is why I talk about so much about it is the, this evolution, right? And I think that there's sometimes I think people think that leadership and like, you know, you get your new leadership seat and it comes with a book and it says like, this is how you do this role. And so much of it is really figuring it out, right? Is understanding that landscape. And then, you know, just like making sure you're moving it forward. And I think the way you've talked about your mindset and the way that you're dealing with your people is so much of the recipes for success for that. Um, you know, and then having those key people that we can turn to, because here's another thing is, I don't know if you found this yet, but sometimes it feels like leadership can feel really lonely. Because huh. like, who else are you able to turn to within your company? There's a shorter list of people that you can turn to, to be like, hey, what do you think of this? Or can I bounce something off of you? And I think that is really important, at least for me in leadership, that's really important. I would agree. And I would think as I continue to grow in this role, that will become a bigger um, component to it. I'm lucky Alteg has incredible leadership. I have great resources that I can lean on. Um, so I think I'm pretty fortunate to have that, but I would imagine that if, if and when this continues to grow, that that'll become more, what's the saying? It's lonely at the top, right? Yeah. Obviously, I'm nowhere near the top. Um, let's not, be, you know, let's be realistic about it. But there's a reason that's that's a phrase. It, yeah. There has to be some truth to it. Absolutely. And there's a reason that you're in the seat that you are. You're really good at what you do. And you're also really good with people and the, and the people that you're leading. And so, you know, I think sometimes I, I often try to remind myself is like, have some grace, like for myself as I'm moving forward as a leader, because we make mistakes too, you know? And I think that's, you know, as long as we're like making it obvious to people and sometimes it's like in a really expressed way, what your intention is, then we can try to 
minimize the gap between their perception and our intention when we're trying to lead. That makes sense. It does. That's actually great to hear. Um, you know, another challenge is in just the way we've been doing business this mm -hmm. past year or two um, yeah. due to, you know, extraordinary events in the world, right? <laughs> COVID has kept us away from each other. Communicating mm -hmm. is, um, is a bigger challenge. Communicating effectively, you don't necessarily get to sit down with people as often as you might like to or as you normally would. Yeah. Um, so being really clear and, and um, in, in communication is definitely, definitely something I, I try to always stay aware of. And, you know, you stumble, you, you know, and I certainly make mistakes all the time, but um, I think it's going well and, and hopefully we'll continue to get better. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you've talked a lot, we, a lot about, we talked about like the evolution that's brought you here. And I'm curious, like, what's the next thing in this space that you're eyeing? Because you got to your role, as you said earlier, by eyeing certain, a, a certain space and then getting yourself there. So what's that next thing? Even if it's just like about what's interesting you. Sure, sure. Um, well, Altad doesn't, Altad, let me talk a little bit, if I could, just a minute or two about the company I work for. Oh, please, Altad, please, is, yeah. Altad is an engineering company. And, uh, you know, we consider ourselves, um, we're, we do design and engineering consulting for four main, what we call our lifeline sectors. And that is um, power. Let me see if I can get these in order. Um, power, renewables, where I work, um, transportation and water. Those are the main, uh, or, you know, the main industries in which we, in which we work and support um, the government and municipalities and companies, et cetera. Um, what I do specifically is run a group or work, you know, uh, collaborate with a group of people in what we call project delivery services or PDS. So what we do is I try to describe it as project management as a service. We provide teams of very capable, experienced project managers and project controls specialists and construction experts um, for, let's say, a large developer that would want to develop um, wind and solar, develop, build, and operate wind or solar projects. And we would be a, a you know, sort of a plug-in scalable component that they can hire to deliver, to be their advocate, and um, make sure that the project is delivered safely and, and on time and on budget. And as everything in a project manager's life, you know, the scope, the, the scope, the schedule, and the budget is all met, all safely, and they've got a reliable power plant in the end. Um, so what I see personally is that what we've done, what we've grown in renewables is completely applicable to all of our other lifeline sectors. So mm -hmm. our transportation group uses a similar model for their clients. Our water group uses a similar model for their clients. So we'd like to continue to grow this group. When we started, it was five, almost five years ago. I think there were four of us. We must have 30 people working on this team now. Oh, wow. So great. It's great growth. And um, uh, it's good, good work. Very interesting, cool jobs. Um, as far as what's next for me in the renewable world, I'd like to continue to see us build more wind and solar power plants. And um, it's towards that, you know, working towards that end goal of having a cleaner, um, cleaner energy sources. Um, I'm not, a, I'm not going to go on the whole, you know, oil and gas versus wind and solar argument, because I could argue both sides of that as far as need right now. I mean, the country, the world is consuming a tremendous amount of energy, and that is not going to change anytime soon. It's only going to increase as, as years go on. Um, the next thing that I'm, I'm really interested in is battery storage, of which we're doing more and more for our clients. We've got um, battery, store, battery energy storage components to um, many of the solar projects that our clients are working on. Um, and then probably not necessarily related to renewables. My interest is in, is in zero emission vehicles because that is um, something you see every day. I mean, most folks use a car. I mean, my average trip in my car, I, I'd be surprised if it was more than 50 miles around trip, um, which is great for a, for a consumer or for you to get to the store or to the office, you know, wherever, or to drive to the airport. If we could see increases in clean vehicles, zero emission vehicles, electric vehicles um, for um, industry or, you know, for uh, uh, 
inter, uh, for um, transportation, let's say, let's say the truck industry, the bus industry, public transportation, things like that. Um, I'd like to see how that grows. I think that's going to be really interesting. Other countries are ahead of us. They're well ahead of the United States in what they're doing with renewables. So it'll be interesting to see how we catch up and, um, and how quickly we can catch up. That's awesome. Yeah, totally. It, so what you told me um, about this whole idea of the storage, and it was funny, I had one of those things where I'm like, oh, right. Yes, we should be thinking. I, I, as a consumer, when I look at these wind turbines, it's like this amazing thing that it just fascinates me. But I was never thinking about then how is it used or how is it stored. So I loved it when you talked about me to to me because I just was oh making my making myself think about things in a different way, making myself be open to. Um, learning, you know, what's going on in a different area that is so impactful, that is such a need, um, you know, and it goes back to what you were saying is like, if you and I may see this more than other people, because we spend so much time outdoors, um, but there's a huge impact, you know, on what's going on, um, you know, with, with the climate and the world and, you know, the way that uh, people are operating. So um, thank you so much for, for sharing all that. Um, before we go, can uh, can you give us an idea of like, who are the types of companies out there? Um, what are the types of brands that are really great clients for you or that you can really service and help um, them move forward in a more effective way? So I think where at least my team can have the biggest impact is we, you know, right now we, primarily serve um, companies who develop, build, and own and operate renewable power plants, wind and solar. Right. So a lot of companies that may be experts in developing projects, which is very complex, may not be, have, may not be experts in delivering them. In fact, a, a, a business model can, that continues, it has been for a long time, is simply developing the projects and bundling them up and selling them to somebody who would take the risk of building them and operating them. So uh, developers, um, small investor-owned utilities, large utilities that need to um, or have a desire to increase the, um, the rate at which they add new clean generation to the grid okay. are people I'd love to talk to. Um, those are very complex relationships, getting, building a power plant and putting it to, on the grid is a very complex process. Yeah. So these, take, these are, these projects take, take many years to, to, to become real. Um, in the renewable side, those are the people we deal with. We, my company also, since we are primarily an engineering company, um, serve the developers and the construction companies with design and engineering services. Everything from the civil work to the structural work and the electrical work and the design and engineering of the substation, which is gonna interconnect to the, the utility substation. There's a lot of moving parts and we're lucky that we've got a great reputation in our markets that uh, you know, we enjoy a lot of happy re repeat customers and we will make sure that we continue to do that. <laughs> um, you know, another great thing, if I you know, to wave the Altec flag a little bit is we're an employee owned company which I love to brag about. And um, it is incredibly motivating. Our company, I think we had about 350 people when I joined it. I believe we're over 800 now. And everyone has a vested, a truly vested interest in the success of the company. And it's, it's great. People are high performing and uh, turn out high quality work in everything they do, which is great to see. It's, it, it's, uh, it motivates everybody to do better. Yeah, I'm so glad that you shared that too, because especially during a time where there's so much disruption happening in employment um, and companies are thinking, what can I do differently, better to lead my people, to try to, um, you know, recruit people, to try to retain people. Uh, so it's, I think it's really helpful to hear what are the things that people do, that companies are doing that are working well for staff, that it's like, oh, wait, that actually matters to me. Um, so, so if someone wanted to get in touch with you or to find out more about what you're doing, um, what's the best way for them to, to do that? 
Well, they could contact me. Maybe we could drop my email and a link when we, uh, if you post this, I'd yep. love to hear from anyone. Um, I'm, I, you can find me on LinkedIn. I would love to connect with anyone um, that uh, I can uh, network with. Um, uh, that's probably the best way. Okay. All right. Fantastic. And then before I do let you go, we, ha- we started this by talking a little bit about mountain biking. So we have to end it with a little bit about mountain biking. And I I think most people who tune into um, this know that I'm a bit obsessed with bikes um, and mountain biking. I've, seen, I've seen your garage. Yes. <laughs> and my mountain biking is my favorite um, type of biking. So um, we have a, a joke kind of in the biking world that the 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 appropriate number of bikes is always N plus one. So. <laughs> <laughs> So with that in mind, um, what are the brands that are in your, on your like shopping list? If you were to add an next bike, oh. what bike would it be? Wow. Always a good one. Um, you know, I love my, I love my mountain bike. It's a, uh, every time I start thinking I'd really like to get a new bike this year or next year, I have a, just, it never fails. I have an incredible ride with, with you, you know, and our friends and, um, uh, and I, I'm just having, you know, reinvigorated with what I've got. Um, that's good. I don't know. You know, I really like to, I know you have a new bike um, in route and that's the Gorilla Gravity. I'm a big fan of those guys and what they're doing. I definitely would have one of those on my radar. Um, you know, the um, Pivot, Pivot Cycles out of oh, yeah. Arizona, they make great bikes and their bikes are very similar. Maybe a, a, a little more modern interpretation of what I ride now. Um, of what both of us actually ride now. Um, so I'd be very interested in, um, in checking one of those out. Supply chain issues in mm. the bike industry have not, not dodged the last year or two of, of you know, issues in the world. So getting new bikes and components is, you know, it's incredibly hard. Um, those two, I think those two, I'd always like to try, you know, new things. Demos are harder to do these days because of the availability of, of bikes and components. But, uh, I would say maybe uh, maybe the GG, maybe the Mach 6. We'll see. Okay. All right. Well, when uh, hopefully when and if my new <laughs> Gorilla Gravity Smash does arrive, um, you'll have to come over, throw a leg over it, play with play with PD, and uh, you know we'll all go for a ride together. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for joining us and all that you shared. And thank you for the impact that you're making on this world. You're the best, Nick. Thanks, Shauna. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye.